Hi guys, it's Mrs. Mundell again. Today we are going to read a nonfiction book about butterflies. And we are so lucky to be in California because we're right in the path of the monarch butterflies migration. You might see some in April as they leave California for their summer spots to the north and east of us, but we usually see a lot more in the late summer and early fall, and they need our help. So at the end of this book, we're gonna find out ways we can help them and we're also going to have a special guest who would like to say hi. So today we're gonna to read Winged Wonders, Solving the Monarch Migration Mystery by Meg Pincus. For centuries up and down North America, every year brought a mystery. Monarch butterflies swooped in for a spell like clockwork from somewhere beyond, then disappeared as curiously as they came. Where do they go? People pondered from Southern Canada, through the middle of the United States, and all the way to Central Mexico. In 1976, the world finally learned the answer with a groundbreaking discovery. A one-of-a-kind insect journey, a remote roosting place, a small speck on the map where, where millions of monarchs are drawn like magnets each winter. The Great Monarch Migration, the news stories called it. So who solved this age old mystery? Who tracked these winged wonders from one end of the continent to the other? Who found their secret roosting place, a marvel of nature? Was it Fred, the Canadian scientist, who spent 30 years studying the monarch mystery from his university lab, who drove through the United States with Nora, his research partner wife, like detectives, trying to track the KG creature's migration from Canada southwards, who tagged monarch's fragile wings, first with paint that faded, then with labels that plopped to the ground when wet, and finally with price tags that stuck. Was it Nora, master organizer of the monarch material they collected, who placed ads in newspapers near and far, seeking ordinary people to help by tagging monarch wings in their hometown? who wrote newsletters and kept in touch with all those volunteers, who logged and mapped every tidbit of information they sent into the lab. Was it those dozens, then hundreds, then thousands of science teachers, backyard gardeners, and other curious souls who answered Nora's ads and became citizen scientists, who gently caught, tagged, and released the delicate dancing insects to help solve the migration mystery? Was it Ken, the American adventurer, who spotted Nora's ad in a Mexico City newspaper while visiting there? Who called her in Canada and agreed to follow the monarchs through Mexico, where he didn't speak the language? Who bumped along winding roads with his newlywed wife, Catalina, for nearly two years, trying to track the butterfly's twisting trail? Was it the villagers and farmers in central Mexico? who directed the couple to look higher and higher up into the thin air of the volcanic mountains and their Oyamel tree groves, who for generations welcomed the monarchs as soaring spirits during autumn's Dia de los Muertos celebrations, who held the whispered whereabouts of their winter roosting place. Was it Catalina, born and raised in Mexico, who introduced Ken to her beloved monarchs, who spoke with the locals in her Spanish dialect to guide their search, who kept 40 notebooks of meticulous monarch data, who first crunched through the early morning snow high in the Sierra Madre Mountains into the Oyamel Grove and exclaimed, I see them, I see them up here. Was it Jim, the American science teacher, who with his students attached teeny tags to tiny wings? who caught and tagged the very monarch in a Minnesota goldenrod field that Fred later found among millions in a Mexican oil grove, who gave Fred the proof he needed that one tiny tag to announce the discovery of the great monarch migration. So did you guys see what happened there? This guy, Jim, tagged one monarch in Minnesota that Fred found thousands of miles away in Mexico. And I actually um, read about what had happened and Fred was standing there in the grove of trees and a branch actually fell 
it broke off and fell and with had millions of monarchs on it. And he saw in that group, this wing with a tag on it and picked it up. And it was the exact butterfly that had been tagged in Minnesota. So it was really lucky that he found it. So who do you guys think? Who do you think was the one that cracked the mystery? It was all of them. All of the scientists, the citizen scientists, the regular folks along the way played a part in this discovery. Each person in small ways or large helped answer the centuries old question, where do they go? And now we know. Each year, millions of monarchs fly the same path, generation after generation, from Southern Canada through the United States to roost for the winter in central Mexico's mountains. Then they journey north again, feasting on milkweed plants all along the way. However, today there's a new burning monarch question to be answered. How will they survive? Monarchs numbers have plummeted since the 1976 discovery from at least a billion down to millions, a handful now for each hundred that was alive then. Chemical sprays destroy their milkweed plants, logging and farming threaten their tree groves, and pollution disrupts the air and weather for their flights. So who can make a difference for the monarchs today? Who can preserve their landing spots and airstreams? Who can keep them alive? The answer is actually no mystery at all. And then I love this because here on this page, it has how we can help the monarchs. It says that according to Monarch Watch, habitats for monarchs are declining at a rate of 6,000 acres a day in the United States. What can we do to change that? Here are some ideas. Raise, tag, or report monarchs that you see as a citizen scientist. Live more lightly on Mother Earth. Use less plastic, electricity, water, chemicals. Eat more plant-based local foods. This next one is the one I'm going to do. Plant native milkweed with no chemical sprays wherever you live, from a small garden to a larger monarch way station. Fundraise or donate to nonprofit organizations that help save the monarchs. Learn and educate others about the great monarch migration and how to conserve it. Which of these actions could you take with your family or your class? What part can you play in the continuing story of the magical monarchs. And now, if I can figure out how to do it, I'm gonna add a special guest at the end of this story. I'll see you guys next week. I just wanted to show you guys Gerald. He is staying at my house while the library's closed and he's having his breakfast right now. So he is happy, but he misses you guys. And he can't wait to hear some more stories in the library.